The second step to God dissociate yourself completely from sinners first Bible lesson, 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 11, But now I have written unto you not to keep company, if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator, or covetous, or an idolater, or a railer, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, with such an one know not to eat. Second Bible lesson, 2 John chapter 1 verse 10, If there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. Golden text, 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 17, Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, said the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Brethren, we are going to reveal two important things to you today, a, the first step to God which teaches us to refrain from sin entirely, and b, the second step to God, which also teaches us to leave fornication, falsehood, drunkenness, juju making, lying and all manner of sins. You are neither to eat with those who indulge in these practices, nor converse with, nor do anything with them. As you refrain from sin, you must leave sinners too, if you want to be a true son of God. How can you be the son of God without dissociating yourself from sinners? It is easier to be the son of Satan, than to be the son of God. God does not want any bit of sin in us. If you leave sin, you must part company with sinners. You are to leave them and their deceitful practices. When we tell you to leave the world, we do not mean that you should abandon the earth, but the earthly things, wealth, money, men, women, riches, fathers, mothers, children, parents and relations. If you want to enjoy God, have nothing to do with sinners, even their greetings. God does not want their prayers or songs. Their actions are sinful. God does not hear the prayers of sinners. Brethren, today's preaching is meant for all those who have finished with the first step to God, that is, leaving sin completely. If you corroborate with a sinner, you are a sinner, an earthly man, a fornicator, and everything evil. It is a great sin for a Christian to eat, drink, converse, exchange greetings, or have anything to do with a sinner. That was why Paul was annoyed when he saw Peter eating with the Gentiles. He, Paul, disgraced him, Peter, in public. Galatians chapter 2 verses 11 to 14. Until you dissociate yourself completely from sinners, you are an earthly man. This was the reason why Christ chose his twelve disciples and had them separated from the world. They had nothing to do with false doctrines, juju men, unbelievers, doubtful followers, money, cigarettes, and drinks. We too must have no business with them if really we are the sons of God. It is not possible to be God's friend or his son without first of all living sinners and their sinful ways. First Bible lesson, 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 11, But now I have written unto you not to keep company, if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator, or covetous, or an idolater, or a railer, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, with such an one know not to eat. Are you a Christian? Brethren do you see, there is no subtraction. If you have done the first step to God, and this step you know, you are near to God. Do not keep company with any brother who is a backbiter, fornicator, idolater etc. Christ was said to be a friend of sinners, but ever since he died and shed his blood, he has no business with sinners anymore. God counts as nothing, the death of 100 sinners a day. He hates people who backbite his workers. What you take pride in doing is what he hates. It is disgraceful for a Christian to drink or smoke or associate with unbelievers. What are you going to preach to them? Nothing in them is good, even the food they cook. If you keep company with sinners, you sin against God, and your prayers are not answered. Do you see now why Christ said, If you do not forsake your father or mother, you can't be God's follower. Matthew chapter 19 verse 29 You do not hate him, but you should hate his bad ways. Traitors are unbelievers, whatever you do for them is lost. God does not count them as his children, and he does not listen to them. I stress that you should not associate with them. Even their word means evil. Do not be surprised to see their prayers worsening a sickness, instead of improving it. They are nothing. This gospel is not meant for them, but for those who have forsaken sin. Second Bible Lesson 2 John chapter 1 verse 10 If there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed.
the weapon. This is our weapon and salvation. Any brother or sister who does not bring this teaching to you, do not greet him or her or entertain them. Let him go his or her way, for by keeping his or her company, you have offended God. Christ said, Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. Matthew chapter 16 verse 6, Mark chapter 8 verse 15, Luke chapter 12 verse 1. The leaven is the false prophet. Why entertain him, when he says, The time of the Holy Spirit and vision has passed. This is the last teaching and the revelation of the word of God. Do not listen to whoever teaches you to wear earrings and other ornaments because this is against Bible teachings. 1 Peter chapter 3 verses 3 and 4. Do not rejoice with a sinner or share with him in committing any sin even if he is your brother or your relative. If you do, you bear his burden. Why do you listen to those who speak evil words against God, whereas you get annoyed when evil is said about your earthly father? You will find the second step difficult if you haven't passed the first step. Brethren, let's think well. There is no greater sin than rejoicing with sinners. The apostles of old had nothing to do with sinners. If you want to be clean, be clean from head to toe, otherwise the juju maker will laugh at you on the last day. Golden text, 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 17 Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, said the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Where do you stand? Do you understand the above lesson? After this sermon, if you still have something to do with a backbiter, you are a Confucianist, you are a pig that throws itself into a muddy place after being washed. The food of a backbiter, his water, words, even his greetings, are poisonous. To associate with a child of God, you must always be clean. Do not touch any unclean thing, and I will hear you when you call on me. Leave all sinners, otherwise you are lost. Many lament why they should be brotherhood, yet things are hard with them. Do you keep to advice? How can the child of God serve demon? The child of God works for the Father. If you do not leave sin, how will you not touch unclean things? Someone says, Do not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. God does not lack children. Remember the parable of the sower, how he planted good seeds, but the wicked one came and planted wild seeds among the good ones. Matthew chapter 13 verses 25 to 30. Satan swears he will continue to mix up with the children of God so as to cause them to denounce God. I tell you this with tears in my eyes, the time has come to select out the real brotherhood. So do not let Satan laugh at you. God, your father, has everything for you, so you should require nothing from the house of the lost ones. Your father has silver and gold. Life is in his hands. A man of God should not befriend a worldly man because he is blind and deaf. Take this gospel home and practice it. You will become the children of God. You know we are looking for saints now. If you are not a saint and you are no longer a juju maker, where do you stand? Surely the world will laugh at you. If you want to serve God, do so wholeheartedly so that he may take you as a child and then you will have salvation. Those who have ears to hear let them hear. May the Lord bless the preaching of his holy words. Amen. The True Lovers of God First Bible Lesson, Luke chapter 14 verse 26 If any man come to me, and hate not his father, and mother, and wife, and children, and brethren, and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Second Bible Lesson, Matthew chapter 10 verse 37 He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me and he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Golden text, Matthew chapter 12 verses 49 and 50, And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples, and said, Behold my mother and my brethren. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. Brethren, this is the word of God. Very frequently you say, the leader says this or that, but today, it is God who says this. When the end of time will come, you will be advised by the Holy Spirit. This will remind you of God's word. When we refuse to believe it, we suffer death, afflictions, poverty etc. Many of us wonder how it is possible for one to hate his father, mother, 
son or daughter etc. Who can ask God this sort of question? God has his reasons in giving this word to you. I am going to give you the reasons one by one, why God says you should hate your father, mother etc., before you can be his disciple. Can a blind man, lead a blind man? Did Adam and Eve heed God's advice? It is because of these people, we are suffering today. If parents are pagans, how can they teach you the way of God? Can a blind man, lead another blind man? Who killed Abel? Was it not his very brother, from the same womb? About 99% of the troubles, persecutions, death etc. that we suffer in the world today are caused by our own relations, from the same parents. The effect of bad teachings, from our parents. Is it not your very brother, who wishes you evil? All your evil wishes are your relations. The punishment and afflictions, you have today, are caused by the bad teachings of your parents. If King killed Abel his brother, why then should God not advise you to hate your father, mother, brothers and other relations? We should listen to God's advice, in order to be his children. Who sold Joseph into bondage in Egypt? Was it not his brethren? David's children suffered, because of the sins of their father. If I continue to show you, all such evils that are perpetuated by your parents and relations, you will be convinced, the word of God is true. Jacob got Esau's birthright, by fraud. It is clear, Joseph was sold by his brethren, and not by any stranger. Who hated Jacob? Was it not his brother Esau? He followed Jacob up to the place called Bethel, so as to kill him. People often make mistakes, but God knows very well, he who shares the very womb with you, is your evil wisher. Who got Esau's birthright by fraud? Was it not his brother Jacob? Was it not their mother, who engineered the whole fraud, in favor of Jacob? Was that a real mother to Esau? Having seen and heard how the father, Isaac, wanted to bless Esau for his sufferings, and services during his blindness, she asked Jacob to defraud his brother of the blessings. Jacob became a false Esau. Jacob objected that he was not as hairy, as his brother, but the mother advised him to cover his hands, with the skin of a kid, thus making Jacob a false Esau. Have you not seen, she had rejected Esau? The father, Isaac, loved Esau more than Jacob. Was Isaac not Jacob's father? Tell me any good thing your wife, child, father or mother can do, for you, to be saved. In the case of Christ, did his brethren not doubt him? Remember when he was urged to go to a certain feast, and perform miracles there. Knowing what they wished of him, Jesus told them, his time had not yet come. John chapter 7 verses 3 to 6 All that was planned by his brother. Do such evil plans by your brothers not affect you, even now? In your family you are not even valued. Some of us talk of our towns. But bear in mind that Christ was killed by his town's people. Is there any place like home, where you are saved? Remember Job whose wife asked him to defy God. What of Samson? Was it not his beloved wife, who betrayed him to death? Know then only God, and Christ love you. The word of God never fails. Most often we meet death, while we are in the pursuit of the things of this life. Most of our troubles, and deaths come from such pursuits. When I mention these things to you, you cannot help leaving them. Even most of our parents, children, wives, etc. cause our deaths and troubles in life. Why then should we still cling on to them? The word of God has never returned empty-handed. Jesus Christ when on earth rejected his father and mother for the service of God. We should cut our relationship with the worldly people. A woman is only a path, passage, to the world, and therefore you should not get worried saying she is your mother. The same thing happens to a man, for he is a caretaker or cleaner of the path. Not all mothers who bore you are your mothers, but the one whose life agrees with yours. The same thing is applicable to fathers, because your father must be one who loves God. The town that loves and accepts God is your town, if you love God. Adam and Eve disobeyed God. God asked Adam and Eve not to eat of the tree of good and evil, but they disobeyed, thereby bringing into the world the issues of both good and evil. There is no court to judge them, but the flesh and the Holy Spirit always remain at war. 
If you are the only man of God in your town or family, all other members being worldly will oppose you. The world today is divided into two classes, namely good and bad. That is why we value this gospel, while others despise it, because God knows our death and sufferings come from wicked parents, etc. First Bible lesson, Luke chapter 14 verse 26, If any man come to me, and hate not his father, and mother, and wife, and children, and brethren, and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. The poison that kills. That is the poison that kills us, and not God, as people believe. You may say why should I go to church, if I should not pray to God for children, wife, etc., etc. These are parables. If your child, wife, father and mother are all devils, what can you do? Do you say, God asks you to smoke or drink, to kill yourself? If you want to follow God, we are to practice His words. If you want to follow your father or mother, you must be ready to face the result. We love worldly things more than God. Where do we go from there? We are in the flesh, and not in spirit, therefore, this makes us children of the flesh, and not of God. If you do not practice this gospel, there is no way out. No other word is greater than this. Many think, Mary and Joseph had Jesus Christ alone as their child. It was not so. Matthew chapter 13 verses 54 to 56. But since Christ knew the others did not know God, he departed from them. I work for my father. Remember when he was 12 years old, he went into the temple after the feast of Passover. The parents did not see him. But when at last they found him in the temple, they told him they had looked for him everywhere. He then answered them, How can you look for me? Do you not know I have to be in my father's house? It is impossible, brethren, for one to have two fathers. God is the only father, and Jesus the only brother. If you depart from this gospel, you have yourself to blame. After the sermon, if you come to me, I shall show you how you go astray through your parents. Refrain from any earthly thing, and adhere to the gospel. If your father is a drunkard, a snuffer etc etc, he will surely not show you the ways of God. They are stumbling blocks on our ways. Abraham at the age of 75 was asked by God to leave his hometown. There had never been a Christian who had ever had a hometown except for the kingdom of God. They had no lovers except God and Jesus Christ. The lovers of the earthly things are the lovers of worldly people. Second Bible lesson, Matthew chapter 10 verse 37, He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. You cannot love two things equally. Is there anyone who does not love his father, mother or his children, more than God? Because of them you go to native doctors, approach sorcerers, and go against the will of God. Tell me, then, how a lover of parents can love God fully. Christ asked Peter if he loves him, Christ, more than others. Nobody can love two things equally. What then is the love of God? It is found in one who is godly and loves everybody as he loves himself. All those who are godly are your brethren. That is why you should say, peace be to you, whenever you meet people. Because, wherever a child of God abides, peace must abound there. A child of God has no dealings with the worldly people. God has no dealings with a father, a mother or children, but has dealings with those who love and obey him. Do not love your father, mother or child because they are related to you, but love them because they love and practice the words of God. Anyone who departs from the words of God is not God's child. God created Lucifer, but since he disobeyed him, he was disowned. God has advised us to disown evil and accept good. Why then should you not leave all those who do not practice the words of God? We know very well, no one ever hates good things. Therefore, brethren, let us as from today be directed by the Spirit of God. Anyone baptized into our fold becomes a child of God. There is no class distinction. Anybody doing the word of God is your brother and your sister, no matter where he or she comes from, whether he or she is black or white, for we are all one in God. Golden text, 
Matthew chapter 12 verses 49 and 50 And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples, and said, Behold my mother and my brethren. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my brother, and sister, and mother. Be a practical preacher. Do you then see where the word of God originates? Jesus Christ did not only preach, but also practiced what God asked him to do, and that system must continue. Do not go to Christ because you are sick or you want to be rich, but do his Father's will, and be his brother. Jesus is no more the friend of sinners, but a friend of obedient children. They said to him, Your father, mother etc. are looking for you. He showed them his parents and brethren, who were the hearers and doers of his teachings. Why then should we rob Peter to pay Paul? Why should we take the good things we receive from God to share with worldly relations? He who helps you in difficulties is your father, mother and everything to you. Only God has helped us from our difficulties. Here in Brotherhood of the Cross and Star the Word of God is not new. Do not say, I am the daughter or son of the leader, if you do not practice what the leader teaches you. How can you be his child, if you are stubborn and disobedient unto him? There is no other way out. Those who obey God are my brothers. This is the time for you, to do, the will, of God. Whether you are old or young. Those for the kingdom of God must obey him. Leave aside jokes, and practice the word of God and do not claim to be the child of God, unless you do his divine will. Those who have ears to hear, let them hear. May the Lord bless the preaching of his holy word. Amen. Thank you Father.